Rav Nosin, he explains in Likut Alachot that you have two basic levels of truth. Truth. In reality, there's many levels of truth, but these many levels, we break them down into two categories. There's what's called the truth, and then what's called the real truth. With a Yiddish, Yiddish vernacular accent, the emis or emis, the real truth. Okay? Now, there's what's called truth in general. For example, you know it's the truth not to kill, not to steal. It's understood there are truthful, it's, 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 it's positive to live peaceful, that's truth, right? So there are items in life for everybody that is understood and accepted as being a truthful attitude in life. The thing is, there's also what's called the real truth. That a person discovers that above this truth, there's a higher level of truth, which I'm striving to connect. In other words, in this world, it's understood that you should live by what you believe to be the truth, right? But the real truth is that you're always striving for a much more deeper truth and accepting perhaps my truth is not in line with what's out, really out there, the real truth. So therefore, I'm willing to put aside my personal truth, what I grew up with, what I believe to be a truthful attitude and perspective in life, to put it aside for the sake of seeking out, searching what is the real truth. This, Rav Nosin explains, is the job of every Jew. He brings various ver verses to prove the idea that every Jew has a mission to seek out who they really are, what is their real purpose and mission in life, why were they sent back to this world in reincarnation, uh, what do they have to do? This is every Jew's job. Someone who's sincere and honest will strive for this truth, the real truth, okay? So it's understood that this is an, uh, uh, an acceptable attitude. The problem is that believe it or not, each person, because of who he is and his makeup, where he comes from, all of the reincarnations in him that make up who he is now, because each person comes from a totally different ball game, a totally different world, because of that, Rav Nosin explains, no two people can have the same personal real truth. You might think there's the real truth, which is Hashem, the God, the Torah and everything, until a person finally woke up in the concealment of being in this world, whether as a secular Jew or a Gentile, and then waking up and then making that search and getting so long, so many ups and downs and difficulties and struggles and toils until they try to uncover and unravel what is the real truth. Fine. But each person has a different perspective even in that real truth. So everyone is different even in their real truth because of who they are and their makeup. For one person, his real truth is to be more involved in doing tzedakah, acts of kindness and chesed. Another guy, his real truth from where he came from, his, from what he is struggling, trying to, to discover and uncover, is to put more investment in Torah study. Another one, his real truth is more in prayer. Another one, it's more in being quiet and hidden and concealed from the public eye. Another one, it is to be a public figure, to be giving classes and to be a lecturer and a known person, etc. Each person has a different real truth. And the problem starts when a person who has uncovered and begun to discover what his personal truth is, he begins to feel and believe because of the immense light uncovered by this discovery of the truth, because emet is considered called light. Torah is called light. Truth is called light also. Emet brings light. Okay? So because a person sees and feels that this must be the truth, not just for himself, but for other people as well, so he begins to try to force other people, force down their throat, the expression goes, his personal real truth. 
And that is a wrong and deadly attitude because each person has a different real truth even. I have proof and discovered that my way and my attitude to everything has to be like this and that. Great. But who knows the other person where he's rooted in? Maybe his real truth is to jump on cars and dance. Maybe it is to wear a white kippah, a black kippah. Maybe it is to dress like this, to have his face like this, to his wife should dress like that. Maybe it is to be more of a businessman. Maybe it is more Torah. You don't know. You can't force your discovery upon other people. And again, it's a weakness because when a person finally uncovers et she'ahava nafshi, what is yearning and loving to discover and uncover, the feeling is so immense and overpowering that it feels that this must be the real truth for everybody. And that is dangerous. That's the test. Because I must leave room for the other person to grow also and to be nurtured. Just like in a forest, in an orchard, you have many types of plants, many types of fruit, many types of trees, many types of grasses. The Jewish people are growing in this holy garden of the Torah. It's called the Gan. The Torah is called the Gan. There's 53 parshiot in the entire Torah, the Bible. So the 53 is the gematria of Gan, which means a garden. In this holy soul garden, there's many types of plants and vegetation. There's many types of Jews. No, not everyone has to dress the way you do. And in your head, well, if he's not like me, so he's unacceptable. He has to be like me. That's not the real truth. That's not the way. This is one of the biggest tests in life, to accept other people for who they are. If they come, you, come to you, wanting and yearning for guidance and instruction, you can be there for them. But then to, to look at people in a critical eye, uh, he's not doing correct, he's not doing right in this attitude, how do you know? If he's within the parameters of the truth, and within that he's building his own personal real truth, you can't dare to open your mouth, you can't say anything. Because he is within technically the parameters of the truth. Just in your eyes, it's not in line with your real truth. So therefore, he's not valid. They can't be like that. But he has to have room to grow, to discover who he really is. Even if you may be older and wiser than the other person, you have to give him room to grow and to discover on his own what is his destiny, what is his real truth, and to come to it and not to force my view on other people. It's something very difficult that when people come across an amazing discovery, they want to share it with other people. That's great. But it should be sharing with other people with the intent of looking for the other person's ultimate good and giving them something that will be helpful for them. But not to force my personal views and interests in giving over what I've discovered for the intent that they should be like me and follow me and to be in my way. We give people room to discover their own personal real truth in life.